We are going back on the road with Ruth and her family as we continue to look into the story, Ruth and the Green Book. If you recall, we had started out in Chicago, a big city, very big city, where Ruth and her family were living. Ruth's dad got a different job and they were gonna to have to move. But before they moved, they decided to take a road trip all the way, and here's Chicago again, all the way from Chicago, Illinois, they were going to drive south, 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 south to Alabama so the family could say hi to grandma and have a little visit with her. We just had an unfortunate experience in this story when Ruth uh, and her mom and her dad all experienced a, a bad problem when they had to use the bathroom or go to a hotel. They were told they couldn't go and Ruth was feeling sad and scared. Let's see what happens now. We kept on driving through the night. Mama took a turn so Daddy could sleep. I fell asleep with Brown Bear as my pillow. We must have pulled off the road in the middle of the night because when I woke up in the morning, we were all curled up in the car. I was stiff and hungry. Mama gave us cold biscuits and jam for breakfast and she said we should sing to cheer ourselves up. We sang a lot that day as we crossed the country. We had a picnic at a roadside stop for lunch and dinner. And because all the restaurants had those signs in the window that said we couldn't eat there. It seemed like there were white only signs everywhere outside of our Chicago neighborhood. We felt homesick. I held brown bear all day. And here is a picture of the family trying to stay cheerful, singing in the car as we continue on the trip. Now we're getting ready to cross into Tennessee, the state right here. Coming south from Chicago, crossing into Tennessee. When we crossed into Tennessee, Daddy said his friend Eddie lived close by. He was sure we could sleep there. Eddie was so happy to see us. He gave me a big hug and told me he knew me when I was real little. His wife, Alice, cooked us a warm meal and I ate too much. Daddy and Eddie used to play music in a band before they went off and fought in the war. They talked about how they traveled back a lot then and how they always had a hard time finding places to rest and eat. Daddy shook his head and said he'd hoped that the war had changed things, but now he could see he was wrong. So let's take a little pause and notice this is a great picture of a group of uh, airmen. They flew the airplanes in the war. And this group is from Tuskegee, Alabama. Well, that was where they were centered uh, to fly planes for the U.S. military and help win a really important war. We can see that all these gentlemen are in their air suits. They've got their goggles. They will pull down over their eyes out in these big planes. Uh, also during the Second World War, black people and white people did serve together in some capacities. That's why Ruth's dad was hoping that when things got over the war and got back to normal, perhaps some of this big problem with trying to segregate white people and black people would have come to an end. That night I went to sleep to the sound of Daddy and Eddie playing music together. Brown Bear and I were happy to be in a real bed with a real pillow. I want you to look at Ruth's face here. She's still looking kind of scared and nervous. The next day, as we loaded the car, I heard Eddie talking quietly to Mama and Daddy. Eddie warned them about what was ahead, someone called Jim Crow. I heard Eddie tell them that however bad it was so far, it was gonna get worse, maybe even dangerous, as we went further south. Then Eddie saw me listening and he picked me up and he told me not to worry. He said I should look out for SO service stations along the road because there, People were nice to us. Esso service stations was where um, the Standard Oil Company had gas stations. And that was where you'd stop to get some gasoline in your car while you were traveling. In the car, I asked Daddy who Jim Crow was, and he explained that Jim Crow wasn't a who. It was a bunch of ugly laws forbidding blacks and whites from mixing in any way. And this is why when they got to the gas station and the hotel, they were told, don't come in here. You're not white. It was the Jim Crow laws. I asked, why don't they want our business? 
Wasn't our money just the same? It hurt my feelings to be so unwelcome. But Mama sighed and reminded me that my job was to look for an Esso station. And here we have her again, getting ready to hit the road. And there's her brown bear with her. I spotted an Esso station near the Georgia border and sang out for Daddy to stop. Daddy filled the car up and asked the man if he knew where we could get a, go to sleep for the night. The man showed us a pamphlet called the Negro Motorist Green Book. He explained that this book was started by a postman, a Mr. Victor H. Green. His name was Victor Hugo Green, to help black people who were traveling. It lists places in lots of states where we would be welcome to sleep, eat, shop, get a haircut, all kinds of other information besides. Right away, Daddy bought our very first own copy for 75 cents. Aha! What an important tool for a family who is traveling. And here's a nice picture of Mr. Victor Hugo Green, the postman who published an important book. And we'll talk more about that at the end.